2009 Form B, number 6, Sequences and Series. So we've got a series. It looks like it's centered at negative 1, right? Um, find the interval of convergence of the power series and then justify our answer. Well, um, this is geometric. So there's more than one way to do it. You could do it using the ratio test. But in fact, this is a geometric series. So uh, geometric series converge for only when the r is between negative 1 and 1, period. No checking endpoints, no nothing. If it's a really bona fide geometric series, the r has to be strictly between negative 1 and 1, right? Because it's a multiplier. If you start multiplying the terms by 1, you're not going to decrease to 0. So um, this is the real thing. So um, that means the multiplier, which is x plus 1, right? That means x plus 1 has to be in between negative 1 and 1. And that means that that's the interval of convergence. So that's it. Uh, part B. The power series above is the Taylor series for f about x equals negative 1. Find the sum of the series for f. Well, that's, again, recognizing that it's geometric. The sum of the series is, since it's geometric, it's the first term over 1 minus r. So the first term is 1. And the multiply 1 minus the multiplier is x plus 1. So that looks like it's uh, negative 1 over x. All right? Right. Um, part C. Let G be the, the function defined by the area under the F function, which we now we know what it is, right? This is the F function, right? F equals negative 1 over X. Um, they want us to find the value of g of negative 1 half if it exists, or explain why g of negative 1 half cannot be determined. Um, there's, two, there's two ways of doing that. You can do the, um, you can work with the series if you want and try to take the antiderivative and figure out what the negative 1 is going to do there. Um, the negative 1 is going to make all these terms, all these bits 0, right? Um, Let's, let's try it that way and see how that goes. So if you were going to go that way, you'd say, OK, um, I know that g of negative 1 half is equal to the integral from negative 1 to negative 1 half um, for this series. That's 1 plus x plus 1 plus x plus 1 squared plus x plus 1 cubed, et cetera. And then so we take the antiderivative. Antiderivative of that is x. Antiderivative of this is x plus 1 squared over 2 plus x plus 1 cubed over 3 plus x plus 1 to the fourth over 4, and so on and so on, from negative 1 to negative 1 half. Right? And then we could say, well, let's plug in our values. So when I plug in negative 1 half, I get negative 1 half. When I plug negative 1 half into any of these little things here, I'm going to get negative 1 half, right? So negative 1 half squared over 2 plus negative 1 half cubed over 3 plus negative 1 half to the fourth over 4, and so on and so on, minus what I get when I plug in uh, 0, which is when I plug in, oh, sorry, when I plug in negative 1 which is just negative 1. 
right? Because all these, when I plug negative 1 into all those, they're all going to turn into zeros. So minus, all I'm doing is plugging the negative 1 in there. Right? Um, and they want us to find the value of that. Um, well, I don't know. I guess we can do that. There's two. I guess the other way would have been a better way to go. I remember something that maybe you don't, which is, I'm going to just put the 1. This is a plus 1 here, so that's going to give me 1 half. And that's um, actually I'll leave that there. Never mind. I'll leave the plus one at the end. Okay, what series does this look like? Sometimes you just have to recognize a series. This alternating series here is remember the series. It's one of the lesser two. The series for natural log of x plus one is x over 2 minus x squared, uh, or hold on, no, it's x minus x squared over 2 plus x squared over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4, and so on. So this looks like that series, doesn't it? It looks like this series with negative 1 half plugged in. Right? So that means that this series with negative 1 half plugged in is the natural log of plugging negative 1 half in for the x there. And that gives me natural log of 1 half. And then I had this plus 1 here. So that's one way to get there. Um, the other way, I think, would have been to recognize that um, this is the f function. So if this is f, then we were talking about here, this is the other way of doing this part, that g of negative 1 half is equal to the antiderivative from negative 1 to negative 1 half of negative 1 over x. And the negative can go to the outside. So that's equal to the negative natural log absolute value x from negative 1 to negative 1 half, which is equal to negative natural log of 1 half. And Let's see, are these two things equal to each other? I think that they are not. So I wonder which one is right and where I have gone slightly wrong. I would be pretty confident about doing it this way. That's probably what they expected you to do and not go through all this and remember that series. So something went, went funny here, I think. Anyway, you can check that out and see, but I bet you that's the right answer there. And I think that that's the way to go. When you can say, hey, that's just like it's geometric, it's just this function. Well, then just work with the function. You don't have to work with the series anymore. So uh, let's try part D. Let h be the function defined by h of x is equal to f of x squared minus 1. Find the first three non-zero terms in the general term of the series and find the value of h of 1 half. Well, now we know what the f function is. Again, there's more than one way to do this, but the best way is going to be, now that we know that the f function is negative 1 over x, that means this is negative 1 over x squared minus 1, or in other words, flipping the negative signs, multiplying the top and bottom by negative 1. That's the same as that. And that is just a geometric series with a first term of 1 and a multiplier of x squared. So h of x would be equal to 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth 
minus x to the sixth. What do they want? For, oops, first three. Can't re follow directions. Uh, first three non-zero terms and the general term would be negative 1 to the n, uh, and then it would be what? x to the 2n, and this would be starting at 0, so that looks good. Right? And then, last, find the value of h of 1 half. Well, that would be, um, we can just do that from here, right? h of 1 half is equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 half squared, which is 1 over 1 minus 1 fourth, or, let's see, 1 minus 1 would be 3 fourths, so 4 thirds. Right, that was fun. Don't know about that. Don't like that. So check that out. All right.